going to head on over here now to visit a guy you probably saw on stage yesterday at the Bethesda press conference, the one and only Pete Hines. How are you, sir? Great Good to see, see you, as Pete. always. How's everything? You Good. guys recovered from the party? A little bit, yeah. That was fun. I was over there last night. You had a great uh, crew. And what an amazing press conference overall, because, you know, last year, you guys focused on just what was shipping yep. last year. So I think people were like, hmm, maybe they're just going to fall at 76. And then all of a sudden, it's like, Here's the entire future of Bethesda, it feels like. You guys dropped a lot of stuff last Yeah, night. it was nice to still have some surprises in the in yeah. the can and to catch folks off guard a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I, I really liked, as I said last night, I really liked what we had to say. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, Todd revealing all that stuff. And I know you and Todd have had a really close relationship yep. for a number of decades. Tell us about sort of the philosophy of, you know, finally, you know, it's a different philosophy of sort of saying, like, here's what we're doing far into the future. It was a result of, of a lot of conversations, and yeah. not just uh, Todd and I, although we do, yeah. we do talk about it a lot, but, yeah. you know, also folks on my team, uh, Tracy and Aaron, who you know well, yeah. our, our, our brand teams and community teams, just talking about, hey, I think we, particularly when there's a Starfield trademark yeah. out there, and folks, you know, Todd talked with you about yeah. Ted Six, like, yes, it's a thing. We maybe need to set some expectations and be a little bit more upfront about here's the cadence, here's what it's going to look like, yeah. and not not give years, but to sort of just say, look, we kind of are dancing around this. Let's just say this is what we're doing. Yeah. Kind of here's where we're heading, and give folks a clear idea. Exactly, you said like it was. You know, people sort of assume that's probably what was going to happen, but when you see the one minute CG teaser, it just makes it that you much get to more hear real. That Elder Scrolls music. Exactly. I mean, that's my hundredth time. I still no, get goosebumps. It's, exactly, it's a true tease. So yep. that was great. But yeah, I got to say, across the press conference. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff, and even with you guys pushing in some new directions with, you know, follow it online, and it feels like mobile is something that you guys are really, um, you know, embracing, I think even more than a lot of other publishers, it feels like, with Look, Blades and stuff. our philosophy has always been, we, we, we never are like, okay, we need X number of VR titles or yeah. mobile titles. It's more like, what are the studios about? What do they want to do? What yeah. are they excited about? You know, when you see Todd and his team come up with something like Blades, you're like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, yeah. that's the kind of thing I would love to play. I can't play anything like that on my phone. Um, so, but we are driven by that as opposed to just sort of arbitrarily coming up with stuff. So it's really yeah. sort of case by case, like what do folks want to do and where do they want to go? And even uh, follow it on Alexa, right? Yeah, uh, Alexa. I mean, Skyrim Alexa. I'm oh, sorry, Skyrim Alexa. Sorry. Literally started out as a yeah. joke. We were like, yeah. we should just sort of have fun with the, like, what's Skyrim on next? Yeah. And then it was like, actually, we could do this, and it's not like a huge deal. We should troll everybody and then actually have the troll. No, the fact be that you actually thing. shipped it, that yeah. was the thing. People were like, oh, it's a fun gag. It's like people were like, oh, no, wait, yeah. it actually works, which is amazing. Look, we, we do this because yeah. we love games and we want to have yeah. fun, and we. Like, we're pretty self-aware of yeah. our criticisms and people making jokes. And no, like, that was to have a... fun with that, like, feels like a Bethesda thing. Oh, that's what was great. I think everyone loved Todd last night because it was it's just so self-aware about everything. It's like every every internet meme, it's like even though he's not on Twitter, he's clearly reading everything. Yep. Are you reading and telling him? Believe like... me, we, we, we are absolutely aware across all of our studios and games what folks are saying and what they want. You're, you're, they're, they're tweeting DC Deacon all the time. They are so, indeed. Um, we're going to talk about Rage 2 because we've got the, the guys here to talk about that, so we'll leave that one behind. But I do want to uh, talk about some of the other shooters you mentioned. Uh, you know, Wolf, the team coming back. Mm -hmm. Youngblood, that's, uh, it was a really cool tease. I love the, love the concept of that. Yep. Um, what more can you tell us about that one? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, yeah. again, it's sort of... If you liked Wolfenstein and yeah. sort of that vibe, um, it, it feels a lot like that. Again, it is a game you can play entirely single player, but because there's twins, yeah. we, they really wanted to do something with the two of them. So you can play single player and she'll just be whichever twin AI you're playing. Right she'll be an AI companion. Yeah. But we're like, look, why not let folks play this together if they want to and yeah. kind of have fun with this thing set in Paris? like. You know, it moves ahead in the timeline so they can have fun with a sort of a different story before they come back to the, yeah. to the original storyline they've been working on. So this is obviously more of a CG thing, but we'll see more of this, I'm sure, soon. And it's coming next year? Next year. All right. So those guys are working hard. And then you teased the new Doom as well. Mm -hmm. um, not Doom 2. Nope. But uh, this is kind of a, you know, I mean, that game was so incredible. And we know QuakeCon, they're going to kind of reveal more of that a title. A lot more, actually. What yeah. can you tell us about that one? Well, um... We, we didn't go Doom 2 because yes. we were like, well, there's Super already a Doom. Exactly. And then, like, how many times are we going to do yeah. this? I really wanted to call it Doom 5 just because yes. I <laughs> thought it would be funny. Uh, but they really like the idea of Eternal because it does have a lot to do with, like, the origins of the Doom yeah. player and where he comes from. Um, you know, you heard Hugo talk about it last night. It's sort of big picture, twice as many demons. They're doing a lot with the, the fast, aggressive style of being the Doom Slayer and how can we yeah. amp that up even more. 
Um, you know, as, as Hugo mentioned, we're teasing yeah. Hell on Earth. That's certainly going to be a part of what Doom Eternal is about. Um, but yeah, you know, last time we did Doom, we did a similar thing. We teased it at E3 and showed it at QuakeCon. Yep. But we only showed it to the folks there, and this time we really want to blow it out and let everybody Stream participate. Stream, everyone will so get to watch it. If it's there, yeah. you know, I got to say, it's a religious experience to be in a room <laughs> at QuakeCon with you know, passionate Doom fans, but you know, yeah. if you can't make it down to Dallas this August, you can watch the stream. We'll have it for everybody in the world to see what they're up to. And I imagine, you know, with Eternal Link, some people are wondering, like, is that suggests it's going to be kind of more of a game of a service or an online thing ongoing, but it's still a more traditional sort of like single player campaign and multiplayer? Yeah, for yeah. sure. But it, look, stuff, yeah. we, we view a lot of things as a game as a service. Yeah. Fallout 4 and Skyrim are game as a service. Right. Like a game as a service just means people continue to play this thing Content, going yeah. forward. It doesn't mean we have to fundamentally right. change what we're doing. It just means we need to have thoughts and plans for, you know, the, the number of people who still play Doom every month is crazy. So like yeah. for them, their last Doom is still a game as a service. Like they keep right. playing it. What are we doing to make sure we're putting out more content so that they have more stuff to do and, and things to play? Well, I got to say the Bethesda on fire. So many announcements, so much stuff. And of course, Fallout 76 is going to be a big release. In, it, it's uh, big. In November. Well, congratulations. You guys started the press conference thing only a few years ago. And I think every up your game and this year, I mean, the number of titles that you guys revealed. Uh, I saw on my Twitter feed you were getting a lot of A's from people on the Thanks grade. Thanks very much. So, That's uh, nice of you to say. Congratulations, Pete. Uh, great to see you as always. Thanks as for always. joining us and supporting us. Have a great E3, Jeff. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Well, we're going to head on.